What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Tonight we have D Marble, who's got a question about the moon and its orbit around the Earth. So we're going to try to answer it, but my guess is, is that he doesn't actually want to know the answer. Because, I mean, I've talked to him, not like person to person, but like th over Twitter, and uh, he's responded to me a couple times, you know, talked or whatever. So, um... You know, he's not really all that interested in actually learning or actually getting responses. He's more or less just putting shit out there and hoping somebody will try to answer him just so that he can hear the same shit that he's always heard. I, I don't understand why, but that's his seems to be what he wants to do with his YouTube channel, which is fine. Not judging or anything. Okay. Why does it do that? Did you set it up that way? No, I didn't set oh. it up that way. It happens when you have two different VLC sources oh. that are playing in VLC. Oh. Uh, and it, it, like, tries to switch it out. Honey, I do not know what that means. You just go on ahead. I love you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can't pronounce duck cow, dat cow, dick who, whatever the fuck. I'll figure it out later. But I know how computer systems work sometimes. All right. So we've got D Marble here. Now, I barely understand the moon's orbit and shit like that. Like, I feel like I know, like, surface level stuff enough to know that what D Marble's saying is bullshit. So we're going to go through his bullshit video, and we're going to point out how dipshit he is. So make sure you get those dipshit bells ready, or the idiot bells. Fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. Sting. Because See, that's, that's what he works. is. I, I know. Thank you, honey. I appreciate you. In the discussion between flat versus globe we often come across the explanation of gravity gravity is the glue in my opinion that holds this whole heliocentric model together but another question that i like to ask about gravity concerns gravity and the our moon now the way that we're taught that gravity works here on earth is that everything's being attracted to the center of the mass of the earth that's what causes people to walk upside down on the underside of a spinning ball and that's what causes these trillions of gallons of water to be able to conform to the outward exterior of this spinning ball earth that we all supposedly live on uh yeah he of course denies this but that is the actual explanation yes gravity isn't the glue that holds everything together but it is a pretty big component of uh the globe earth or, or heliocentric theory or or, or uh, uh the heliocentric fact it's not it's a scientific theory i guess but i mean it's a fact that you know we orbit the sun and shit uh, and that's due to gravity and gravity's effects on the bodies around it and how big the gravitational field of the sun is. Uh, he denies all this, of course, and he considers it walking upside down. It's not walking upside down. I mean, true, when we see pictures from space, we orient it in a way that we've always known it to be oriented. But, I mean, that's just because that's what we're used to. In space, in like a 3D space, there's not really a up and a down and shit. Anyway, my question is, it kind of comes in two parts. The way that gravity works here on Earth seems to be different than the way that gravity works out in space. The way that it works on Earth is the whole, like I said, mass attracts mass. Everything's affected by the Earth's gravitational pull. Therefore, everything is being held down to the surface. Okay, fine. Yes, that's basically how gravity works. Um, but gravity works the same here on Earth as it does out in the solar system. Like, I mean, we have a mathematical formula that's a law uh, that where we can uh, appropriately calculate gravity. Of course, when you get into, like, orbits and celestial bodies and everything like that, like, things get complicated. But, I mean, like, those ca like, like the, the calculus and everything like that, when you apply it to orbits and, and shit... I mean, it's still gravity. It still works off the same base principles. Like, without a firm base, you don't have the mathematics for, like, orbits and uh, celestial bodies and shit. Uh, so, I mean, you have to have the base level, like, understanding of force equals G or what... I can't remember the exact thing right now. Um, I think it's G times M1 uh, times M2 divided by R squared. I believe is the force of gravity formula, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, F G, yes, big G, uh, big M, which is the one mass, little M, the other mass, divided by R squared. I got it right. Booyah, motherfuckers. Gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Ah. 
Woof. Nah. Math. With the exception of bugs, smoke, uh, clouds, helium balloons, hot air balloons, things like that. But I digress. Now, out in space, the way that gravity works, it just causes objects to orbit around other things. See, in the heliocentric model of our solar system, all the planets are orbiting around the sun. Okay? Now, be, the Earth is said to be orbiting around the sun also although we see video of what is obviously the sun making a circuit around the face of the earth but uh no well that's not the sun making a circuit around the face of the earth that's the rotation of the earth like i get that you don't think that the earth rotates or whatnot but you can go and ask your buddy bob over there whether or not it rotates he'll say that it doesn't rotate but his experiment says something fucking different but <laughs> Uh, that right there, you can tell, uh, and, and just to dispel any flat earthers out there that might be thinking, oh, this is really good evidence of a flat earth. It's not good evidence of a flat earth. For one thing, the sun right there, it's not changing in its angular size. Like, its, it's radial size is not changing at all. So, it's very, very far away, for one, you can be sure. Uh, for two, you know that it's not, like, overhead because of the shrinkage uh, of it. Uh, it, the fact that it's not shrinking and the other fact is is that like Shrink, it's, shrinkage can be a problem shrinkage is a problem but <laughs> <laughs> uh but the the fact that it, it it's going down and it's sort of like doing a, a sort of a cosine or a sine kind of thing is not really indicative of the sun going around the planet like that like it, it, at any one point i mean it, it like it should like disappear completely like because it got too small not because it went behind mountains or some shit like that uh so anyways th this disproves nothing moving along let's play globy here oh shit guys d marble's gonna play globy if you're a globe believer and you go with that model, you prescribe to the idea of gravity as has been taught, then you also believe that the Earth is orbiting around the Sun as well as all the other planets. Now, there are five planets that are beyond the Earth that are still orbiting around the Sun due to the idea of being within the Sun's gravitational pull. Those planets are Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now, according to the globe model, Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. It has a 272,967 mile circumference, and it's also large enough to hold 1,321 Earths inside it. Now, Neptune is the planet that is farthest away from the sun in our solar system. It's said to be 2.793 billion miles away from the sun. Now, I would have to ask the question, if the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter, is subjected to the gravitational pull of the sun if the planet that is farthest away from the sun neptune is subjected to the gravitational pull of the sun and caused to orbit around it why is it that our moon which is hilariously smaller than jupiter and way closer to the sun than neptune why is our moon not orbiting around the sun what we Okay, before it gets into his flat flurf thing, uh, I just wanted to explain real quick. Uh, technically, the moon is orbiting around the sun. It's just that the moon is close enough to the Earth for the Earth's gravity to have more of an effect on the moon than the sun. Uh, now, the sun does have an effect on, on the Earth and moon system. Uh, we see that with the Earth's tides. Uh, that's the reason why there are two tides a day. It's uh, due to, uh, you know, the the, um, the pull of the sun. Uh, but also, if the moon wasn't being pulled by the sun in some kind of way, or at least the moon-Earth system wasn't subjected to the sun's gravity, uh, I think that you would see, like, maybe the moon... I don't, I don't know what the moon would do. Like, see, that's one of those situations where... I mean, without the sun's gravity, I'm really not sure what the moon would do. Would it fly off its path? Would it do something weird? It would orbit around the sun. Well, I mean, it would. It would. Well, that it would fly off the path and orbit around the sun. But I mean, it, see, saying that oh, the sun's gravity doesn't have any effect—that's really special pleading. 
Well, it's just not true. Well, it's not true, but it's saying that gravity works between the Earth and the moon, but it doesn't work between the moon and the sun, and that's just not true. There's still an attraction there. It's just that the Earth's gravity is greater than the moon, uh, and the, the Earth's gravity is greater than the sun's gravity on the moon. Uh, at least it's a fact. So he thinks that he's, this is like a gotcha. Like, why doesn't the moon break off from the Earth's gravity and uh, orbit around the sun when it's already orbiting around the sun? It's just that it's also orbiting around the Earth. He does, he does know that these other planets have moons too, right? No, I don't, I don't know if he does. I mean, Jupiter's moons, uh, uh, at least a few of them are called the Galilean moons, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand what his problem is with our moon as opposed to the other moons. Like, I, I guess I don't get it. I, I don't, I don't either. I don't think that he actually knows how gravity's effect on Jupiter all the way out there. Like, I don't think that he understands like how the sun's gravity affects stuff in the solar system. He's a weirdo. Yeah. Understand in the flat Earth community, the sun and the moon are what moves here. They make a clockwise circuit around the center, which is known as the North Pole. I even took a trip to Alaska last summer so I could get a time lapse of the sun doing just that. The sun starts at this orange pole, moves off around the mountains, comes back around this little hill, comes back through the sky, and there it is back at the orange pole. So, I love, I, here's one thing that I like about Dean Marble. He spent, I'm guessing what's a lot of money to go to Alaska. I don't, I've never oh, chartered a plane. He just took his van. <laughs> he just took his van. <laughs> I mean, when you can drive said, your house, why the he, fuck not? He said he flew up there. Um, One of his biggest videos or most viewed videos is him like floating. Um, <clears throat> or, um, uh, is him in a plane with a spirit level disproving a globe earth with a level. Like he just took a level on the plane and said like, look, say it's still a level. No, it's not fucking up. What a dumbass. <laughs> Quentin Van Boeven, I don't think he understands how a car engine works. <laughs> That's unfortunate for him, but very fortunate for his mechanic. Um, but uh, I love how D. Marble, Daryl, went all the way to Alaska, presumably for this experiment, which I don't know. Maybe he was up there for work. I don't know what he does for work. <laughs> I think he works. Maybe he was up there for work or something. I don't know. <laughs> I thought he does this for work. I don't know. I doubt it. He's only got about 50,000 subscribers. Oh. But anyways, so he went all the way up there to film the sun orbiting like the, the uh, uh, Alaska in the sky, right? Motherfucker didn't even get a solar filter to put on his camera or anything like that. He didn't prepare at all. He was just like, well, I'm just going to go up there and film the sun going around in the sky. And then boom, there's flat, motherfucker. <laughs> If he would have used a solar filter, he would have seen how the sun's size didn't change. I don't know if you know this, D-Marble, but when shit goes off into the fucking distance, shit gets smaller. That's one of your primary arguments for why things appear to go over the curve, right? It's because they get so small. It's kind of weird how that doesn't apply when it's the sun that doesn't get smaller. Didn't you know that when ships go closer and closer to the horizon that, like, they shrink? Well, yeah, they shrink. No, like, literally. Obviously. Oh, they literally o shrink. Like, obviously, fucking Ant-Man. Obviously. Anyway, Timothy Dutton in the chat had a really good explanation. He okay. said, gravity strength is proportional to the mass of the two objects and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two objects. So while the sun has an effect, the closeness of the moon to the earth means that they have a much stronger interaction. Well, yeah, the, I mean, that's the mathematical formula. Yeah, I know. I just words. was adding it, It's it a in. good, yeah, it's a good explanation. Um, we get Chris Kelling who said, I think that's when he did this spirit level experiment on the plane to Alaska. Probably. Steve Bowden says the sun is a grower, not a shower. <laughs> <laughs> um... But, but yeah, so, uh, I, that, I mean, that's pretty much what I said before is that, you know, the Earth's gravity is going to have more of an effect on the moon than the sun. And, of course, he wants to say right here that the moon and the sun orbit in the sky, but, I mean, you still have to take into account droppity or anything. Like, you have to be able to explain, like, 
Why is it that close? Like, he leaves a lot of things unanswered, and he's just free to just leave them up in the air while science has explanations for every fucking thing. Let's see. Uh, Godless Engineer, this is from Team Skeptic, says, The sun pulls the moon harder than the earth does. The moon's orbit around the sun is influenced by the mass of the earth. Well, I mean, I, I, I didn't want to go into, like, an area that I wasn't all that clear on, uh, but... Like, that's why I was confused earlier by, like, if you took away the gravitational force of the sun, like, from the moon's Earth system, like, I don't know, I, I, I get, I mean, if you just did away with all of the gravity, then shit would just go flying everywhere or something, I don't know. Like, when you shoot the guys in, in Division 2, and shit goes flying everywhere. <laughs> JC says he needs to explain 24 hours of daylight far north and technically all planets uh, are moons of the sun. So the moon is orbiting the sun. Well, yeah, of course, the moon is orbiting the sun. The moon is definitely uh, affected by the sun's gravity. Um, and it, it's just the, the distance from the sun to the moon uh, compared to the distance from the moon to the earth is why, you know, the earth has more of an effect on it. Um, if I don't get that exactly correct, shoot me. Don't don't do that. Just you could, you could leave a comment, and <laughs> and you could just go on to the next thing. <laughs> if we have five planets that are much larger and much further away from the sun than our moon, why is it that the moon doesn't orbit around the sun? It does. As always, be good to each other. Take care of yourself and stay flat. Don't stay flat. Don't visit any of his shit. You'll just get dumber if you visit his shit. <laughs> Um, like I said, uh, this was a really short video tonight. Uh, he just wonders why the moon isn't affected by the sun's gravity, I guess. And the short answer for all of this is the moon is affected by the sun's gravity. The moon is orbiting around the sun with the earth. The earth has more of an effect on the moon and, and like its position or whatnot, uh, because it, it's the moon earth system and all of that is moving around the sun in an orbit. So, um, like I said, if I didn't get that exactly correct, I would love to hear your critiques, uh, whether they're pedantic or not, in the comments section. <laughs> I appreciate everybody's super chats tonight. I appreciate everybody being here, watching, having fun with me, correcting me on my bullshit explanations and everything like that. I really appreciate it. I do. If you will, please go down below, leave a comment after this post or whenever you happen to do it. Um, and uh, we will see you heathens later. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens. Oh, bye, y'all.